just a few things. Uh, with the fMRI, we see that the time resolution takes between uh, seconds and minutes, whereas only the EEG takes only about milliseconds. In addition, uh, the fMRI only measures the changes in the blood, blood flow, whereas the EEG directly measures the electrical activity within the brain. Uh, looking at the MEG, uh, the MEG is only able to detect the sec only tangential component components of the electric field. Uh, the magnetic fields also are less distorted than the electrical field, meaning it provides a better spatial res resolution than an EEG. Uh, the MEG is more sensitive to superficial cortical activity, and it's also reference free, meaning it doesn't have to. Uh, work. It doesn't need a reference of voltage, whereas an EEG does. So to wrap up, pretty much, there's a lot of medical devices you can use to measure electroactivity in the brain. EEG is the goal of center for measuring these activities, and um, the fMRI and EEG, they both have their advantages and disadvantages when using them. And just depending on what you're exactly you're looking for, you just select them accordingly. Uh, can you max simulation put an fMRI in two different areas of the brain at the same time, or are you limited to only one area? Um, what do you mean? Like, well, like, can you map multi-passing, or like, can you only have the patient focus on one thing at a time? Um, I think you can, just, yeah, like, you can, like, if you're trying to, like, move an arm and, like, recall something. Yeah. Yeah, it should show, like, blood flow to, like, various parts of the brain, depending on what your, like, where it functions, or what part of the brain functions that. So, yeah. I think ideally, um, you should just do one, uh, one action just to simplify yeah. the whole process. Because you won't know what part of the brain is doing for it. Just, yeah, you want to isolate brain activity. So, which technique is widely used, fMRI or MEG? Um, FM, um, fMRI is more usually used um, because it's newer. Um, I have a question. Let's say someone has a some kind of titanium implant in their skull for, um, let's say they had a car accident, for example, and uh, they get that implant and they take an MRI. How would that titanium affect your uh, plotting of the changes in blood flow? You mean MEG, right? For MEG and fMRI. Well, in MEG, it would affect it since it's, because um, it's really small, the magnetic field you're creating. So since it's not, That'd be more of a bit blocky head. Um, I think that MRI is using the field to detect um, changes. I think it's only uh, detecting like fluid flow MRI, so I don't think it'll affect it that much. It might maybe it might um, make it less uh, or make make the signal have a smaller magnitude because it might block out or absorb some of the I guess the rays. Go to the first page, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So what is what is that? Uh, what do the colors like represent? I think it just represents like um, probably like different blood flows throughout the brain, but based on like a contrast agent. So like the flow would be different in each individual case. Uh, we didn't look too much into that because that was like one of the other methods, but and we we're just focusing on that MRI. But yeah, I just wanted to put a picture that showed like what one another kind of uh, imaging is. So you, so you don't know. Okay. Well, not, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> uh, you were saying that to improve the MRI, you would uh, try and try and get rid of the the motion or try and uh, counteract that. How would you go about doing that if you uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to go ahead and improve the uh, quality of the MRI machine? Well, if, if you were able to do real-time corrections, like to eliminate parts of the motion, so instead of having the patient stay for a long period of time to correct the, like, because you have a certain period of time in which you take <coughs> the so when the person's moving around, you're going to have, like, certain errors in that data, so just by take, removing them in real time, so it's like a finish flow of, um, of uh, unknown data that's not, um, that there's no motion in the data. Wouldn't you be eliminating some of the data while that? Well, like, what if they, what if they, move, what if they have uh, part of the brain that's trying to image is image during that time. Because <laughs> <laughs> right, 
you, you're saying to, to get rid of, uh, to, to eliminate the, the motion, you would just delete that part of the data. But what if you're trying to image it, uh, trying to image a certain part of the brain, and they happen to move during that time, you would, you would be getting rid, rid of that. So how would you, how would you uh, fix that? Instead of having it really close, you have to have a certain distance between it. 